So let's go ahead. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my task is to, within 25 minutes, give you an overview what you can do as a clinician, as a physiotherapist, as a maybe nurses, uh, try to do the things to prevent the amputation. Uh, India is at the epicenter of diabetes quake that we have been talking over and over for years. Uh, but the main thing is it is because of a rapidly changing disease profile in India. Why is it changing? Because India is a country in transition, you see such a contrast everywhere and uh, the food habits are changing. You see in uh, metro cities like Bombay, Chennai, the young students eating something like this, which gives you thousand calories and I call this a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> okay. uh, also we must realize it's not in India, all over the world the disease profile is changing. 2009 was a very landmark year because that is a year for the first time in the history of mankind you had a deaths due to non-communicable diseases increasing more than the deaths due to communicable diseases and deaths due to diabetes were more than deaths due to HIV and uh, AIDS. And this is a current phase of diabetes in India. And this is a statistics which we know that every 30 seconds somebody lose 20 seconds somebody loses the limb because of diabetes as against 30 minutes due to uh, landmine. Beautiful feet like this decorated when diabetes strikes this, this is what happens. I think we need to understand why that happens so you can prevent the amputation. So also diabetic foot is a Cinderella of medicine. Nobody bothers about that. Nobody is worried. It's all neglected. And you can see, uh, get, see the reflection in research all over the world. See the number of papers which are published for diabetes and number of papers which are published for diabetic food. This used to be the treatment in 19th century. As of today, we have 67 million confirmed diabetics, so we have 134 million feet to look after. And as I said earlier, we have 200,000 higher level amputations. The tragedy is 85% of them are completely preventable because they are because of neuropathic infected ulcer. So just cost of, at the cost of three to 500 rupees per year, you can prevent them. So diabetic foot ulcer is a major public health problem as of today. And you can see that if a person gets an infected diabetic foot ulcer, he spends 50% of his annual income on treatment. Uh, and that's uh, something a huge loss for a family. Diabetic foot patients are very vulnerable patients. The cause of their vulnerability is neuropathy and immunopathy. And you have a very narrow window of opportunity to treat them. Unless you utilize that narrow window very aggressively, most of the patient would ultimately land up with a uh, amputation. We must remember ulcer is the beginning of the end. So you need to prevent the ulcer and if at all occurs, very aggressively treat it. Now, why you need to uh, prevent the amputation? See, every patient who undergoes below knee or higher level amputation has to have a 5 to 10 percent extra cardiac reserve to walk because the remaining leg is also neuropathic. And that prosthesis has to be lifted by that neuropathic leg. So you will find majority of the patient, uh, you know, go into left ventricular failure or they start bearing weight on the other leg. So there is 85% mortality at the end of five years. And this is what, uh, you know, George Bernard Shaw used to say, that people spend so much money to cut off the leg, but nobody spends money to save the leg. And these are really speaking only four indications as far as we are considering India for a higher level amputation. When you have millions of patients, the policy is that deformed foot with a good footwear is better than an amputated leg with sophisticated prosthesis, which is more likely to kill a patient. Now, how do you prevent? Prevention and diagnosis has to go hand in hand together. 
just this is algorithm all of us know the point of showing you that each and every patient of diabetes will go through the some part of this organ or uh, algorithm or all whole algorithm as long as in spite of all this you educate the patient to keep his epidermal barrier of the food that is skin intact there cannot be any ulcer so uh, i think if you prevent by education and proper footwear in spite of deformity and vasculopathy the break of epidermal barrier then patient can still be walking with even 30 years of diabetes but the moment that barrier breaks and it forms an ulcer it gets infected the disease takes completely different turn and becomes unmanageable and as i said these are the three reason four reason for ulcer occurring out of that first three you cannot prevent but what you can completely prevent is a injury and you why do you see patients who are walking around with big ulcers that's because the standard things which are taught in medical schools that every uh, infection will have a fever every ulcer will have pain is all absent in diabetics and you need to have a very high index of suspicion because these are like icebergs and this is a famous saying by thomas campbell the coming events always cast their shadow and you can see the small pustules which is missed and patients are treated on outpatient basis and this is what is missed that's why people land up with amputation and that happens because you have unwritten policy in southeast asia no complaint no examination because patients do not complain anything related to the foot nobody looks at their feet and that that's the main problem this is one study uh, i think in from this year january we showed that if you give a good podiatric care which translate in india for a foot care uh, you can prevent many amputation when you see a patient of diabetes who comes to you for a foot problem you must first classify whether they are ischemic or neuro ischemic or neuropathic or neuro ischemic and you must remember you must measure that neuropathy or vasculopathy because what you cannot measure you cannot manage it's a very simple common sense principle and these are the four equipments which everybody should have a simple monofilament sensitometer handheld doppler and goniometer to check the biomechanics of the foot and these are the types of injury which occur in every patient uh, all over the world the particulars are in insect rat bite and uh, you know vigorous massage which causes pressure injuries patients have a uh, sensory neuropathy and they get rats and insect bite because they cannot feel the pain so these can be easily prevented by patient education this is a injury which causes maximum number of loss of limb that is a pressure injury and you can see people using acupressure slippers which are very popular can cause a punctate pressure and multiple areas of necrosis this is just to give you idea what happens and why it is preventively more important you can see that uh, every person when he walks right from childhood to death the peak plantar pressure in on the fore foot is almost 600 kilo pascals which is a huge pressure for example at a 15 kilo pascal all arterials are shut off at 6 kilo pascal capillary circulation gets obliterated so there is a tremendous anoxia ischemia in the fore foot at every step which gets re there is a instant recovery as soon as the foot comes off the floor that is what is lacking in a diabetes patient because of a glycemia plus neuropathy so delayed uh, recovery from anoxia physiologically translate into inflammation warm and erythema on the forefoot this has a very great clinical significance there are number of studies which have shown that if the forefoot pressure or forefoot pressure goes on increasing the temperature of the foot will increase and that itself is a predictor of a future ulcer now if patient neglects that keeps on walking next stage in a physiological cascade is exudate which manifests as a blister which breaks down and forms the ulcer so teaching the patient uh, at the end of the day to feel with the back of hand first third and fifth metatarsal and finding out if these areas are warmer than the rest of the foot is very important because patient needs to be educated that if these areas remain warm that means he is walking beyond the capacity of his feet when the, there is a progressive neuropathy and unless he reduces his activity or reduces or monitors his activity, 
is heading for a problem. And monitoring the temperature of forefoot is key to pre uh, prevent preventing ulcer. And we have a lot of technology like thermography. Uh, there are now smart socks and heat sensor, uh, bathroom uh, mats and all this, but this is something which will come up in India very uh, later on after a few years. This is a new technology which is developed by MIT students where a diabetic patient stands in the morning morning on a bathroom mat and it senses the temperature and sends him a message on his mobile that these are the areas which are threatened. Now we cannot have that but we can simply teach the patient to feel with his back of hand uh, when we have millions of patients across India. Another thing we need to check every time is a simple thing. If you check with a goniometer which is nothing except uh, protractor in school compost boxes the extension of the first toe, uh, I think every, whether a physician or a nurse or a physiotherapist can check, it is normally 15 degrees in standing position. With a non-enzymatic glycation, when there is a limited joint mobility, that range reduces. Now, if you find successively every year that the range is reducing, you can just simply change the footwear and prevent the ulcer. Otherwise, the pressure builds up on the first MTP joint and that breaks down. And that's why you find majority of the ulcers on first MTP joint. And this is how simply you measure with a school uh, compass boxes protractor. Many times uh, you don't have to see if you are very observant and if your patients are wearing closed shoes, you will find that normally when you purchase the closed shoes, within eight to 10 days, you see the horizontal creases. Now that happens because all MTP joints are moving together. When one starts moving late, you get an oblique crease. And just looking at the patient's footwear, you can make out that. So you need a very good clinical observation in this. Now many times you have a patient who come with a small ulcer on the fifth MTP and then after a few days they land up with a ascending uh, proximal infection. That's because the infection spread through the peroneal ten tendon. Similar thing does not happen on the dorsal side because dorsal wounds usually uh, localize on the front of the ankle because of a loose retinaculum. So these are the facts. If you have an ulcer either on a dorsum or a first or a fifth metatarsal, you must aggressively treat it. Otherwise, that patient is heading for an ascending infection. So the message is 85% of diabetic foot ulcers are within out there because of a repetitive moderate force of day-to-day -day routine walking in the presence of advancing neuropathy and no amount of antibiotic and dressing will heal the ulcer unless you offload the ulcer bearing area of the foot. Similarly, you see many patients walking around like this. They are told to apply moisturizing creams and all these things. And that happens because these are the hemorrhages in callus. And unless you scrape that callus, you will not see the ulcer. You can see this. The ulcer is revealed, you need to aggressively treat it, which will be discussed in many other lectures. Unless you aggressively treat it, this is again a problem. And you can, uh, you know, trim the callus with this new sort of a burr, uh, which is diamond studded burr. But these are the technologies which will be available only in a big hospital. You have to classify the wounds when you see. This is a new classification, Wi-Fi. It's like a TNM classification for a malignancy where you have a wound infection and ischemia classification so you can at a one go know what is the status of the wound and you need to manage these wounds by these factors right from the offloading to the education of the patient and these are the methods of offloading will depend right from bed rest to sophisticated footwear will depend on so many factors like patients weight age social status wound all these same patient may require a different modality at a different stage of wound healing. But the best treatment for neuropathic ulcer which is not infected is a contact cast which heals the ulcer rapidly within 8 to 12 weeks and then is your job to keep it healed. And coming to the surgical treatment, the simple principle, these are the classes of surgical pre uh, treatment but I think you mostly in India you see the Class, last class that is class 4 because we get so much such a large uh, quantum of infected patients 
you can do all these surgeries as Dr. Steinberg and Dr. Aparajita has shown earlier, but you have to also tackle infected feet. The basic principle is at the end of the surgery, it is the end point is not only wound healing, you have to give biomechanically viable foot, which will not again break down and create an ulcer. And these are the guidelines which have been published by uh, Diabetic Foot Society of India in 2008, how to salvage biomechanically viable foot. Uh, these uh, are available on the website. You can get it at any time from Dr. Rajesh or Dr. Narayan Murthy. One point I would like to stress as uh, Dr. Steinberg has rightly said that don't reduce the length of the first metatarsal uh, bone. If you reduce that, that foot becomes non-viable biomechanically. If you have to reduce, then go ahead either do transmetatarsal amputation or try to correct the balance. Otherwise, that patient is just directly heading for an infected foot. So you have to keep in mind, even in acute cases, how patient is going to walk later on. Uh, unless you plan that, you can never uh, uh, prevent the amputation. So these are all detailed guidelines. Uh, most of this surgery in Indian setting we do under local or regional anesthesia, that is femoral block, popliteal block. And it is easy because even seriously ill patient who have comorbidities can be operated. The advantage is that you don't have to wait for a blood sugar to come down. If the diabetic ketoacidosis control patient is hemodynamically better, you can still do all this surgery. You don't have to keep patient fasting for longer time. So all these advantages are there. The most important advantage, you can get rid of an infection very fast. How soon you should do? As soon as possible. Uh, as I said, if this surgery need to be done urgently because unless you remove the infection, the whole situation cannot change. And you need to only see that the patient's diabetic ketoacidosis is controlled. Ulcer like this is a small ulcer with a big problem, that's osteomyelitis. The point I would like to stress, this is a myth that every osteomyelitic toe needs an amputation. This is a meta-analysis of almost 1,000 patients, more than 1,000, which showed a good result with a aggressive clinical treatment by doing a culture uh, uh, of the wound culture examination, give culture-specific antibiotic, good wound care and offloading. You can see this example, how it heals rapidly. So every osteomyelitic toe does not require amputation. As far as antibiotic are concerned, for the purpose of antibiotic, we in our practice in Amruta Institute and in Bombay divide the wounds for non-limb threatening, limb threatening, life threatening and we devise our own protocol every year. An infected wound like this, you need to keep in mind that there is an immune dysfunction always because of a hyperglycemia and so the wounds are going to take time. You need to give antibiotics systematically instead of giving it empirically. And these are the organisms uh, which will be usually seen. It is a poly uh, organism uh, status always in diabetes. Fungal infections are very common in India because of a weather and barefoot walking. This is one study we have done in Amruta Institute which showed 27% incidence of fungal infection. And you can see pictures like this, a variety of diabetic, this in diabetic patients. Wound care. If the realities are very bad, we don't have any wound care nursing, we don't have wound care courses. As I said in uh, our education, the cost of uh, wound care is very high. So we need to correct all that. Just to stress one point, really speaking, these are the only three reasons for wound not healing and 90 out of 100 time patients are walking on that. We don't do correct vascular assessment. In earlier session, there was a question whether palpable pulse is a good indicator, really speaking it is not because that pulse is fed by the collaterals which have developed over the years. So if you want a correct assessment, every patient's ankle brachial index should be done. At least you should hear the sound. Remember a duplex Doppler tells you anatomy while hearing a sound will tell you a physiological perfusion and inadequate preliminary debridement and these are all secondary but important causes incorrect uh, method of dressing. These are the agents we should not use. We are using still USOL and all though Britishers have left 60 years back and they have stopped using. We are still using USOL across India in all the medical colleges 
where I see the patient's feet are being dipped in a uh, tub filled with usol. I think this is uh, something which needs to be stopped. Just few case studies, you can see the wound like this uh, needs a proper debridement and again a met osteomyelitis of the uh, metatarsophalangeal joint and the, uh, in the second you need to remove the ray and this is what I meant by biomechanically viable foot is that you can see that second, uh, third and fourth toe is gone. Now if you remove these two, the remaining two toes, second and fifth will deform. So you need to remove all this. You can think of removing this and you know do a proper TMA. In Indian setting, uh, as Dr. Uh, Steinberg rightly pointed out that earlier we tried to keep the length. Indian setting, the problem is the people are almost unwilling for even a two toe amputation. So many times we had to compromise this and later on correct it. As I uh, said earlier, see if you keep on re reducing the length of the first metatarsal, slowly the patient ultimately gets infected and lands up with a higher level amputation. We do a lot of Sharko foot fixation, uh, something like this with a calcaneo tibial fusion, Elizaros. Uh, we do this corrective surgery for closure of the uh, ulcers. Uh, the, uh, just one other case, you can see a young uh, patient who had a uh, ischemic lesion with an infected foot. In such patient, you need to uh, first do a preliminary debridement to make the patient ready for a, a vascular surgery and or endovascular procedure. So we had done a debridement and later on uh, we corrected and did an angioplasty. This was a picture 48 hours after that. And this patient refused to stay in hospital, went home, came back again with this. He still refused after 20 days. Then he came back and then we had to do a four foot amputation. We could not achieve a complete closure because of a lack of skin. And later on it healed and we gave him a four foot prosthesis. So it is a prolonged process. A lot of people, a lot of team members have to be involved. Again, something innocuous like this, this patient was referred to our hospital because his factory doctor forced him to come to our hospital because he said this is, you cannot work with this in the factory. And we found this sort of a, uh, you know, osteomyelitis. But again, the point, as I said, you, every osteomyelitis does not need amputation. We just did a debridement, did a partial closure of the wound and gave him a culture specific antibiotic for 12 weeks and it healed. Again, this sort of a, uh, you know, ul ulcer, recurrent ulcer on the heel because of a neuropathy. We have done a sliding flap and closed it. So you, if you can achieve the closure, uh, then most of the wound, if later on given a footwear, would heal properly. This is a something new which has come up over the years is that many times we do the debridement and we find that uh, again the fluff forms. So if you do a uh, immunohistochemistry of the debrided age of the wound, you see this uh, two markers, uh, C mycin and beta catenin. If they are present, that means your debridement is inadequate. So you can, uh, something like this can be done like a frozen section in the side room of a OT if you have facilities, and then you can prevent the re-debridement. This is a schematic representation. Similarly, it has been shown in uh, animal experiments that those rats which are made diabetic with streptozoacin have, uh, you know, lack of this factor, SDF1 alpha. And if when, as soon as that is injected, the progenitor cell home on the wound and wound starts healing. So these are the things which will come up in a near future. This is a schematic representation. So these are the feet which are not, these are walkable feet. They don't need amputation. And we must remember, especially for the physicians, that all the physician tell the diabetic patient walk briskly for 45 minutes to one year, uh, one uh, hour for five days at least so the diabetes will get control without checking the neuropathy level. And I think faster the gait, higher the pressure, longer the stride, higher the pressure is something they must remember. And the patient should not be told to walk for a longer time because many patients tell me we are walking four kilometer, three kilometer. They should be taught to measure the distance in minutes. And this is one technology which may come where there are sensor in the shoes which tells you that you are walking more. And these are the patients with these conditions should not do these exercises. So modification of exercise schedule is very important. Rehabilitation, 
footwear and patient education is a cornerstone and the principle of a footwear is footwear should do what foot cannot do uh, there are a lot of changes which occurs which can be corrected this is a basic uh, triangle of prescription for diabetic foot patients and they should be the, uh, told that the footwear needs re repeated change and that has to be done a footwear cannot be for two years as in the presence of advancing neuropathy a foot like this does not need amputation you can have a afo with a good molded insole hawaii slippers very popular very dangerous for a neuropathic patient you can see the patient is sitting the moment he starts walking he's holding it so tightly so two things will happen either he will have a friction blister with which can get infected or he will get early toe deformities preventive diabetic foot clinic should be there as they are uh, there in chennai where uh, paramedics can examine the patients and uh, advise them about foot care and foot care wear and it is a team work but the most important member of the team is patient and his family members if they are not willing no foot can be saved and these are the 10 commandments of a foot care we teach the patients and everybody should be taught to do all this care and what i have shown you is nothing new it is a 300 year old surgical principle adequate drainage of infection but it is also not an incision and drainage of abscess it is a foot exploration it takes as much time though it is done under local anesthesia like a exploratory laparotomy and unless you have adequate knowledge of a diabetic neuropathy you cannot salvage any foot and as i said this is a face of diabetic uh, diabetes in india today i call these patients a foot attack and like we have you know we need to change our mindset because uh, unless we have 67 million patients unless we have open mind we cannot control all this problem and amputation prevention in 21st century will require team technology and tenacity you have to be very persistent in a team approach with adequate technology input so you can save this feet remember we have acute coronary units we have stroke units we need to have a very aggressive treatment comprehensive treatment diabetic foot units because they are the patients of a foot attack and we must remember time is a tissue we lose more time we are going to lose the tissue and you must always have a concept of toe and flow you must measure the flow in each and every patient before you operate and the callus is like a benign breast lump it needs to be excised and we must inculcate in a patient and family physicians the concept that diabetic patient th there is no cure it is only remission because neuropathy and diabetes is going to remain so the concept of five year ulcer free survival should be there and this was a saint vincent's declaration this was a 2005 diabetes where all these declaration we decided that next 10 years the amputations in india will be reduced by 50 percent we have not achieved if we want to achieve it in next 10 years i think we should at least minimum do don't allow the patient to walk on the wounds they will literally walk to death and if all the physicians and healthcare providers do only minimum this i think we can still reduce the uh, number of higher level amputation also the point i would like to stress when you have millions of patients technology is not a solution it is a simple clinical examination measuring the or identifying high pressure areas clinically and protecting them with orthotic is the only solution what you need is a, all that you need is a a uh, pair of sensitive hands and eyes yeah. except filament and tuning fork really speaking you don't need any high tech uh, for a primary prevention but this is not a successful treatment of diabetic foot as it is considered in our country in most of the hospitals we have a tradition of foot care and footwear in our country uh, though footwear is very important for diabetes it is there in culture and religion it is there in politics also but it is not in diabetes I think we need to bring it in a diabetes in a proper format so we can prevent all these amputation and I would like to end by showing you very famous Sanskrit saying which means one who walks his fortune marches ahead. I think uh, we want all the fortunes of all these millions of patients to march ahead so we need to preserve their feet. Thank you. Thank you sir. It was quite a comprehensive talk. Now I would like to request Dr. John to enlighten us with the topic of wound deprivation.